everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create a sculpture inspired by the work of Jean de Buffet. He was a French artist um, who created what you might call art brut, which was a type of art that was a little bit less common. It was a kind of art that was made by the types of artists who maybe are not trained to be artists um, or the types of artists that are just starting out and are new to creating art. So his kind of art explored lots of different things. Um, he enjoyed taking chances in his artwork and, and trying things that had never been done before and doing them in a different way. So some of his art that's really famous um, is art similar to this. This is one of his paintings, um, but he did a, a style like this that he also created into sculptures. And so he has um, pretty large sculptures, a lot of outdoor sculptures that are created in the same style. Now, when we create this sculpture with paper, um, it will stand on its own. Um, it's four-sided. And we're gonna explore using a continuous line to create the shapes of the spaces that we're gonna make. So, um, when we get started, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a scrap paper, um, because you're gonna be outlining the edges here with black. So you wanna make sure you have a scrap paper that you can use. Um, and then two sheets of, I'm using copy paper or printer paper for a computer printer um, that's a little bit thinner because you're gonna be stacking them to cut them. So if they're, they're too thick, it gets really hard to cut. So when you get started, you're gonna make two continuous line drawings. Um, in his work, you can see there's a lot of connected spaces and they're very organic shapes. And we can do that with a continuous line. So. When you get started, you're gonna start with your black marker. Um, you're also gonna maybe want a couple of colors, a pair of scissors and a glue stick. So if you have those things ready, you're good to go. Now, when you're doing the continuous line, try to use more of the side of the marker instead of the tip to get a thicker line. And a continuous line basically means you are not gonna stop and lift the marker. You're just gonna keep going. So whatever happens kinda of happens. You're taking a chance by doing this. Um, you can, the continuous line can touch like that. Um, if you want it to cross over and go through things, you can do that too. But you're basically gonna fill this whole paper with a continuous line. You're not gonna stop. You're just gonna kinda keep going. You're making different organic spaces by doing this. I'm kind of traveling sort of up and down so that I get lots of different spaces throughout the paper. So you can keep going and going, but you don't want big spaces. So you wanna make sure you keep things pretty close together. And you're gonna get all the way across the paper without lifting your marker one single time. Now you're gonna do this for both papers. So once you get done with the first one, Gonna do the exact same thing to the second one. That way you have enough to do the whole sculpture. All right, so I'm gonna stop the first one there and I'm gonna switch over and now I'm gonna do the second one. And I'm trying the whole time to kind of keep the side of the marker on the paper to get those thicker lines. If I lift up and start doing the tip, the lines are gonna get thicker. I'm sorry, thinner. So it helps to kind of angle the marker a little bit and get those thicker lines. All right, so as I get this finished here, you are going to be turning these two papers into four. So once your lines are done, you're gonna need to get your scissors ready, and you're also gonna need your um, folding skills. So we wanna make sure when we're folding here in a second that we line up our edges really well. It makes it a lot easier when we put our sculpture together. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna take both papers, I'm gonna line them up, make sure their edges are together.
together. Make sure the corners match. And then I'm going to bring them together and fold. And at this point, it doesn't matter where the design is. So if the design's on the outside, that's fine. If it's on the inside, that's fine. And then once I have folded them, I'm going to open it back up and I'm going to use that fold crease that I made to cut on the line. You want to take your time on this step and make sure that they are lined up. All right, so now I should have four sheets of paper. And that's good because I need all four for my sculpture. So now I'm gonna line them up again and I'm gonna fold them. And this time I want the design on the inside. So think of it like a hot dog bun with the design on the inside. I'm gonna carefully try and line up my edges and my corners. And if you need an adult to help with this, that's fine. I'm gonna crease it while it's all lined up. This part's really important that it's lined up. If these aren't lined up, it's gonna get super hard. So now my designs are all on the inside and on the outside here, I need to make sure the fold is closest to me so I know where it's at and the open edges should be facing away from me. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna create an edge so that I get this kind of shape towards the edge of my sculpture. Um, when you do this, it's important if this is gonna be the bottom, let's say, that I go all the way to the corner on the bottom. I do not have to go all the way to the corner on the top. So I could start anywhere along this top edge. I'm gonna make this my top here. Um, actually, why don't I do it this way and that way you can see this is the top edge, this is the bottom, here is my fold, and here is the open edge. So if I start at the top here, I can come all the way from here or anywhere along the top edge and just kind of make my own sort of line that I want. But when I end at the bottom, I need to end at the corner, okay? Now, along the fold, if you want some of these cool open spaces here, you can add those in as well, but you have to start and stop on the fold. So if you want just one, you can do just one. If you wanna do two, you can do two. Now, you're going to cut on these lines that you made. You're gonna keep the papers together, you're gonna keep them folded, you're gonna hold them carefully so that they're not moving as you're cutting, and you're gonna cut on the line. If it doesn't stay perfectly on the line, that is okay because you're not gonna see this line when the sculpture's put together. So if you, if you miss a little while you're cutting, that should be all right as long as the papers stay together. That is the most important part. Otherwise, your sculpture won't line up when you assemble it. All right, so there's the outside. I don't need these leftover pieces. I'm not gonna be using them. So then what happens is I'm gonna decorate each of these sides. And this is why the scrap paper is important. So I'm gonna separate these now and I should have four that are exactly the same shape. So you have four papers here and you can open them up and flatten them a little bit right now to work on them. So for each of these papers, I need to do two things. The first is I need to use my black marker and I wanna trace the edges. That's why I'm working on a scrap paper here to kind of give it that finished edge. So I'm just gonna go along the edges, I'm gonna trace them. I'm trying to use more of the side of my marker to get a thicker line on the edge too. So my scrap paper is a different color than the paper I'm working on and that kind of helps me to see the edge better. If my scrap paper is white, it really is kind of difficult to see if I'm actually on the edge of the paper when I'm doing this. So um, you may wanna make sure your, your scrap paper is a different color. All right, so after I outline the edge here, then I'm gonna add some designs, some colors to my spaces. Um, you can see in Subafe's example, um, he uses a lot of stripe patterns. Um, he also colors some of his faces. You can see the same thing in his sculpture example. So you see some colored spaces and some striped spaces. Now, you can use any pattern you want. Stripes is a pretty fast pattern, but if you wanna do like polka dots or something like that, you can certainly do that instead. I like to kinda keep it um, like a pattern. So I usually do three colored spaces and then three striped spaces. So I'm gonna do that first with black. So I'm gonna kind of space out where I'm coloring some of the spaces. I'm gonna just try and stay inside the lines when I'm coloring. I'll do my best coloring. Make sure I fill the whole space. 
Um, so maybe one near the middle, one near the top, one near the bottom. And then after I do three colored spaces with a the color, then I do three stri striped spaces. So maybe I do some stripes here. And then they can go different directions. They don't all have to go diagonal. They could go horizontal. They could go vertical. Um, that's kind of up to you. Let me do one right here. And then I feel like I need something over here. So I'm going to do them um, over here. Now, once I've done that with black, then I'm going to add a color or even two colors. So in this one, you can see I've done red. Um, you can certainly use the red and blue like you see in his sculpture. You can just do one color. That's really up to you. Um, so now I'm going to color three spaces with the color. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I didn't mention this earlier. If you have the openings in the middle, you also want to outline around those edges as well. So if you didn't do those, you don't need to worry about it. But if you did, sorry, I didn't mention that, but you want to outline those as well. All right, so let's see, I've got one here. Um, I'll do one up here. And then maybe hmm, I'll do one over here. And then I'm gonna do three blue striped spaces. So one here. Um, one here. I'm trying to kind of space them out a little bit. And then one here. All right, and if you, you can keep going. If you want to add more than one color, choose your favorite colors, that's great. But you are going to repeat this with all of them so that they all have that same amount of coloring and designs done. So I actually have a set that I've already finished that on. So these four are all completely done. You can see them. They all have, I did green and black in this one. So they're all completely finished. So now you're going to fold them back up so that the design side is on the inside. You're not making a new fold, you're just kind of recreasing the fold that's already there. And basically you want to be able to make a stack so that they all can stack on top of each other. Now the first one in this stack, so I'm going to start with this one. Um, you're going to need your glue stick now, and what you're going to do is you're going to put the glue on just one side of it. So make sure you kind of get some, some of the glue around the edges. And it's good to work on the scrap paper for that too, because then if you want, you can kind of go off the edges with the glue stick and make sure that there's a lot of glue on the edges. So then, this is really important. You want to start by lining up the bottoms first, because otherwise your sculpture won't stand. And then you want to line up the folds as you're laying it down so that it's directly on top and then you know give it a good press rub it a little bit to make sure it sticks um, so you're going to do that again until all your papers are glued together in a stack so make sure you do some glue along the edges so the edges are holding together and then like i said line up the bottom first that way your sculpture is going to stand and then like make sure you're lining up the fold as you lay it down um, otherwise it's going to be harder for you to get your sculpture to stand up when you're done. All right, so I've got one more here to stack. All right, so now once I've got them all glued together as a stack while they're folded, um, I'm almost ready to open it up. I have to add glue one final time. So they're glued together as a stack, but I have to put glue on one final side in order to bring the stacks kind of rotate them around and connect them. So I'm gonna add glue one final time here. And then I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna bring it around and kind of bring these two sides together. And then kind of press that flat and try and get it as flat as you can. All right, so now I have four sides. Hopefully they're not glued together. If not, you should be able to bring them apart. So then I can open it up and kind of make it so it's like an X at the top here so that it is standing. And then I have my sculpture when I'm done, just like that one. All right, I hope you have fun. I'll see you later.